Hey students, welcome. In this video we're going to be discussing about angular velocity and angular acceleration. I want to first invite you, uh, invite you to uh, <coughs> subscribe to our channel so you can get notifications you know, of all the new videos we're going to be creating about mathematics and physics uh, soon. So in this problem they say that a turntable initially uh, rotating at 20 radians per second experiences the angular acceleration you know that is shown in the gravity law. They say what is the turntable angular velocity at t equals 5 seconds and at t equals 10 seconds. First we have to remember in this case is that the angular acceleration is equal to the omega dt so it's equal to the first derivative of the angular uh, velocity with respect to the time. So if we solve for dw here for the omega, we can say that the omega is equal to alpha dt. So if we apply, of course, integral here, we're going to get, you know, that omega, the angular velocity, will be equal to the integral of the angular acceleration dt. So basically, we can say that this is just the area under the graph of alpha. So the angular velocity would be equal to the area under the graph of the angular acceleration. So I have this graph over here in the first part of the problem, the one, of five, the, the one that I just find, you know, the uh, angular velocity at t equals 5 seconds, so I will just find, you know, the area under this part of the graph, right? So to find omega or angular velocity at t equals 5 seconds, right, we can say that the final angular velocity is equal to the initial angular velocity, in this case, plus alpha delta t, right? This is pretty similar to all the equations that we know for linear velocity. Uh, in this case, we know that the initial angular velocity was 20 radians per second, so we can say that the final angular velocity that t equals 5 seconds is equal to 20 radians per second plus, uh, then now we have the angular acceleration that is uh, 4 radians per second square times 5 uh, seconds all this multiply by 1 over 2 because this is going to be the area of the triangle we have over here right of course the seconds cancel with these seconds over here so we're going to get 4 times 5, 20, times 1 over 2 would be 10. So all this expression would be 10 radians per second. So we get that the final angular velocity at t equals 5 seconds would be 20 plus 10, so 30 radians per second. We can do the same now when uh, t is equal to 10 seconds. So we can say that w at t equals 10 seconds, right? Uh, if we know that wf is equal to w initial plus alpha uh, delta t, in this case, we're going to do exactly the same thing that we did in the first case. So we have that the final angular velocity is 20 radians per second. That was the initial angular velocity. Plus, then we have the area of this same triangle that go from 0 to 5 seconds. So I have 4, I will put the 1 over 2 first here, it doesn't matter, the order of the factor doesn't matter. So 4 radians per second square times 5 seconds plus then we have this other area that is under the axis of time. So we're going to have 
in this case 1 over 2 and then minus 4 radians per second squared times 5 seconds because from 10, 5 to 10 you have 5 seconds so this value would be positive 10 radians per second this value here would be negative 10 radians per second so 10 minus 10 would be 0 so we're going to have the final angular velocity would be 20 radians per second in this case and it makes sense right because the same amount of acceleration we have here of angular acceleration positive was the later you know uh, the acceleration so there is a, an angular acceleration here there is negative and have the same magnitude you know than the initial positive angular acceleration we had so thank you for your attention uh, I hope this exercise is going to help you to understand better the relation between the angular acceleration and the um, angular velocity and remember to subscribe to our channel